Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the lovely Kiara. She is new to the Myers-Briggs space and uh, I stumbled upon her video recently. Absolutely love the content that she uh, puts out there. She's one of the most genuine person off the bat that I've ever seen uh, posts in the Myers-Briggs community. And she's also very accomplished. She's an Olympian. I can gas you up as much as I want, but I think it will be better for the community to hear it from you. Thanks for that introduction. <laughs> um, yeah, well, as John said, my, my name's Kiara. Um, I am a Winter Olympian. I grew up in the desert of Western Australia and uh, not really where you would find a, a Winter Olympian. So it's quite a long story. You can go and watch the, the video on, on that, on how that journey kind of happened for me. But um, I, I currently work as a, a mindset um, and high performance coach. Um, I'm trained in neuro-linguistic programming and hypnotherapy. And I've just started this channel in the hopes that in a couple of years time, when I retire from sport, I have a community of like-minded people. At the moment, I'm just, uh, you know, I've had some great success on some of my videos. And one of them was the um, the Myers-Briggs one that I put out one, one time when I was uh, not very prepared. This is an incredible opportunity for me to meet you all and tell you my story. And the Myers-Briggs community online gave me a lot, when especially when I was younger. And so I, I hope that I can give back. And I, I really, my, my wish for everyone is that they, they live the life that they want to live without all the shitty anxiety feelings and, and uh, loneliness and some of the things that I experienced when I was a bit younger. I think this is a growth community and I think that's a space where I can help and I want to help. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked to be here. <laughs> she forgot to mention her website, but she's uh, um, she, yeah. she has her own website. Um, after watching this video, you're going to hear how wonderful she is, how much she can help you improve your mind, body and soul. So check it out once you're done. I have a link to her YouTube channel below and on her YouTube channel, there should be a link off to her website as well. Like I already mentioned earlier, but one of the reasons why I uh, wanted you on my channel is not only because you're very authentic, I do believe after watching a bunch of your videos that you do have some type of expertise in certain aspects of life that other people would either find fascinating or it can help them grow as a person. Are you ready for this conversation? Yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> For those of you watching, I already mentioned she's the user Myers Briggs space. So we're not going to go too in depth into cognitive functions or too in depth into Myers Briggs itself. I think the most value that she could bring in this video specifically is just to kind of talk about her experience. Young girl living in the desert of Australia to being uh, an Olympian. That's a crazy dream that most of us chase. How was it possible? What happened? And what were some of the like, struggles that you had to overcome to get there? Well, the town that I grew up in has about 600 people now. When I was growing up, it was a mining town. So there were there were a few more. It's, it's usually FIFO now, which is fly in, fly out. Families used to come up. So there's probably about 2,000 people in the town. So it's a little bit bigger when I was um, growing up. We lived on a property with a lot of animals. My dad loves animals. Um, and so that gave me a, a huge sense of freedom when I was younger. And so we had, we were outside a lot. So we've got a big family, three immediate siblings and then two older siblings from my dad's first marriage. And so I would describe it as a very free life growing up. Um, we had a lot of space. We, we could kind of go out and do what we wanted and build what we wanted and explore what we wanted. And I, I'm really grateful that I had that um, experience when we went to high school like because there were so few people in the town the high school you know only had you know maybe 10 kids from year 8 to year 12. It, it just wasn't the best education space for us so my parents wanted us to have better education opportunities so we went away for school which is only two and a half hours away so it was close enough we went to a larger city which has about 40,000 people called Kalgoorlie that's another mining town and that's where we went to high school we've got a lot more um, opportunities there, education. I, I moved away from my parents at a very young age. Me and my sisters actually lived together by ourselves in a house. Wow. Um, and so there's a lot of responsibility at a very young age for us to look after ourselves. But the way that we had grown up, we had a lot of those skills to do that. And they would have never done that if we couldn't really do it, I guess. I worked in the mines for a little, little while after that, after high school, to save money to go to uni because my because I grew up on a farm, I wanted to be a vet always. And then when I got to university, I uh, I just, I was there for about eight months and I hadn't gone and talked to anyone. Like I just, 
I put myself on campus so that I would like be around people, but then I just lock myself in my room. Yeah. And I was just like, ha, oh, I need to make some friends. Like this is quite lonely, but I I I need to be in situations where like it's more natural. Like I can't just go out and be like, hey, I can do that now. I was like, what can I do to make friends? And I was so I was like 20 at the time. And I was very good at athletics when I was in school. And so at the school carnivals and stuff, I did quite well, but I never trained for anything. And so then I um, went to an athletics club and I was like, that's good because I don't have to be in a team sport where I don't have those sort of skills. I can just train. I can get fit. Like doing sport is obviously good for you. And then I can hopefully make some friends. And I just went to a very elite minded coach. And that was he just had he just had a system in place. And he was so, had such conviction. He's like, you just do the program, you get better. I was like, I had no aspirations to be anything particular in sport. Like, I never thought I was any good. Like, I wasn't great when I started. I, I realise now that I had, like, a lot more potential than I believed, but I wasn't good. I like doing things well, and I like being the best that I can be. He was just so, like, this is what you do. This is the past of all of the people that I've coached and this is what you this is what you look like you can do um follow the program and you'll get better and I was like well I like getting better at things <laughs> and so I actually then like moved all my life around like being dedicated to sport I just wanted to be better like I just wanted to keep getting better at it as soon as I feel like I'm not getting better at something I kind of I'm like okay sort of done with that and mm -hmm. I'll move I'll move on to the next thing and so um uh, that led me down a path. I, I got to second in Australia three times in a row for oh, um, the, the heptathlon. I qualified for the Commonwealth Games 2018, and um, then I didn't get selected, unfortunately, and so that was a bit devastating for me. At, before that, I didn't even realise I was kind of at com my my coach told me like we're training for the Commonwealth Games, but I'm like, yeah, am I am I good enough for the Commonwealth Games? I don't know. Um, and then I like qualified and I was like, oh yeah, you told me I'd qualify. Yeah, I didn't get selected, unfortunately. And then I, I realized it was because I lived in Western Australia, which is very isolated from the West, rest of the Australia. It's a very big country, very expensive to go over. I hadn't done enough competitions. Then unfortunately I got injured quite quickly. And then when I got on top of my injuries, we went into lockdown and mm -hmm. then we were locked down for a very long time. Um, in Melbourne, this was one of the harshest lockdowns in the world. Um, and then so after about 18 months of that, I had been given an opportunity in the past, sorry, this is a long story, um, to do bobsleigh, which is really like a couple of girls reached out to me and they're like, oh, have you ever thought of doing bobsleigh? And I was like, bobsleigh, like like the Jamaican thing. What do you mean? Like, do we do that? Do, you know, do Australians do that? I'm like, yeah, you know, we go overseas and you have to go over for like the whole season though. It's like six mm -hmm. months. And I was like, oh, can you just like, have a go like can you jump in and see if you like it or whatever and um they're like oh you'll have to go overseas and do that and I said oh is it funded or no you'll just have to pay everything yourself and go over there and I was like you know what I like I quite like running <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to spend all the money I don't have to um go over and jump in a, in a sled going down ice for 140k an hour like, like it doesn't really yeah and so I kind of left it when they first asked me, but then we just kept getting locked down. And um, I was like, you know what? I couldn't go home to my family. I kept applying to go to Western Australia, but they had closed the border. And mm -hmm. so I could get an exemption to leave Australia for the bobsled. And uh, they, they kept telling me my body would cross over really well. So I was like, okay, I'll go do that. And so <laughs> I left overseas during the pandemic and started training for this bobsled and my body did cross over very, very well. And then four months, I, I learned it all and I got moved over teams and then I found myself at the Olympics wow. as a great woman in a bobsled. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just, like you couldn't have predicted mm -hmm. anything that happened with that. I, that experience taught me a lot. Yeah, when I came back, I wasn't gonna do the sport again, but I did um, this yeah. No, it was just, it's a lot of money, right? Like yeah. being away for six months, especially during the pandemic, paying for your flights, accommodation, equipment, you know, things like that. Actually, after the Olympics, I trained for this NLP and hypnosis. And, and while I was at that course, I was able to make the decision 
realizing that it was actually what I wanted to do. Like I wanted to do it, but I wanted to do it differently to the, the first time I had done it. The pilot I went to the Olympics with reached out to me again and um, she was able to make a case for me um, racing with her in the two men. And she was like, I'll get the same results if I have Kiara with me. And uh, now we're fifth in the world at the moment. <laughs> we're chasing. Wow. Fifth <laughs> we're in chasing, the world. Yeah, we're chasing, um, yeah, chasing that top spot, really. So, mm. you know, I love, I love being unlimited, you know, like I, I was, I limited myself a lot growing up. I was such a perfectionist and I'd be so scared of starting things and I'd be so scared of failing myself or failing people or letting people down. I, I never used to let people see me do things until I was already good at them, you know, mm. like I would go and work really hard and, and then and then it got really exhausting because I would come out and I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, like I can do this thing. And they're like, what? And they're like, oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> you mm. can do all this stuff. And I was like, like I don't need approval for like how I got there, but also it's not luck. Like it's not yeah. luck that I got to these spots. And I sort of started to see the value in showing people the journey and showing people the struggle and showing mm. people that you can change that's so important to me because i want to influence people by showing them that i can that i can do it right so like i don't think there's much um weight in in what people say if they're trying to tell you something they haven't done themselves you know with the sport thing obviously i highly value being an elite sportsman but it wasn't my you know ultimate goal because that's what i really deeply needed like I don't want to make it sound like I didn't want to go to the Olympics or anything like that. The journey in sport is slightly different for me. I want to show people it's possible. Like I started so late. I started from a small country town. I want to show the people. Oh, sorry. I want to show the people in, in small towns that there's more out there. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that I uh, like asking. Do you believe that younger Kiara would have been proud of like seeing who you are right now? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, pride was always a weird thing for me. I don't idolize many. Um, well, I don't idolize anyone really. Not not in a sense as disrespectful, but like <laughs> I'm not envious of of um, what other people are doing. And so then achieving something isn't necessarily for the point of pride, I guess, because the way that I see pride is like other people it seems to have a little bit more weight with other people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like saying that I'm proud was always a bit strange to me. And it wasn't like I was not happy. Like in any point of time, I don't think I've been wildly unhappy with myself because I was always trying to be the best that I could be. Younger Kiara would be like, wow, fuck, how'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Rather than like, like she wouldn't be looking up to me and going, like being envious does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm incredibly proud of myself now it's taken me a, a, a long time i think to realize like that's a thing it's not just an achievement it's 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 special maybe i'm not sure if that answered your question oh you're you're fifth place in the world i'm not top like yeah. ten thousand in anything in the world like that, that that's crazy to me just to even think about like, yeah it's taken me a long time also to acknowledge it you know, like I don't like using those sort of things, you know, as a title, like mm -hmm. using the Olympian thing as like, it was quite uncomfortable for me, like at the start to use it as a marketing thing. But if I'm honest, like it was part of what I, I felt like I, I really wanted as part of like the way that I can influence most people is to show them what you can do. Yep. So I have to tell them what I've done to get that across it took me a little while to be able to just confidently say yeah that's that's what i've done so really embracing the whole thing and just going you know what fuck like that's you weren't there before and now you're there and you can like enjoy when you're there and like stop thinking that the next thing or like what you need next or whatever like what's the point in doing it if mm -hmm. if you're not going to celebrate it and enjoy it and it's a very special thing to be part and um, it's it's added so much value to my life, and I'm so grateful. Especially out of the pandemic, like it's what I needed. If you didn't get into that earlier on, do you think you would have done something else that potentially would have gotten you to the Olympics again? No, 
<laughs> I, I, I wasn't even going to do sport. Like, I wasn't even I, – I was quite active when I was growing up, like, because – the lifestyle we lived i think and i noticed that university i was becoming a lot less active <laughs> like <Nice>. zero active <laughs> like yeah. and i was just like ah, oh, that's bad i can't just go to the gym i have to go to the gym if i'm training for something and then i'm like i, I really like going to the gym because i know where it's gonna do but i hate going to the gym just for fitness like that's just i don't yeah. want to do that and even running, like sprinting, I, I love sprinting now. Like I just, it, it gets me out of my head. It gives me this sort of movement meditation sort of stuff. But if I'm not training for something, then I'm like, oh, what's the point of going to training? Whereas some people just genuinely enjoy it so much, they will go, they're like, I, I can understand it's good for me and everything. But if I'm not heading towards something. <laughs> yeah, so I started sport to be social like that was the purpose. Um, I, I had the coach that I knew could improve me. I was like, well, then purpose is improvement and then um and then I kept it just kept taking me to opportunities that I could have never predicted you know there's so many times that you you just get these opportunity and your life pivots in a different direction I always think about like what if you were in like what what did the parallel version what does she look like like what that version that didn't start athletics I wonder what what mm -hmm. would happen to her but I yeah I I wasn't I, I wasn't because I grew up in such a small town like I didn't have in my head that I was going to be an Olympian like that doesn't I'm I'm the I'm the first Olympian from the whole region, you know, there, let alone Winter Olympian. But, you know, that's the thing, right? you got to take the step and you got to go and do it and see what happens. I was always very careful before that, I think. Athletics helped me be a li little bit less careful, put a bit more trust in other people. A lot, you have to put the trust in your coach, right? You have to do a lot of things that are uncomfortably early. Like the process of sport teaches you so much. And I think that's what um, I, I can really offer to people because you know, I'll eventually have a, a paid sort of setup called mindset of the Olympian. Sports people don't give themselves enough credit for like the skills and stuff that you you need to get you where you go kind of thing. Like, and they can be applied to any area of life. And so now I'm sort of starting to get into business. I'm really able to concretely match the parallels on, on oh, that's because of this mindset, I can do that. And that's because of this and having trust in the people around you um, is quite important to that and like being really strong on your boundaries and, and your energy and things like that. Yeah, I think it accelerated me to into an aspect of growth that I probably wouldn't have got to anywhere near as fast because I, I wouldn't have been forced into anything. I wouldn't be forced into racing when I wasn't ready. I, wouldn't, I yeah. didn't like doing things when I wasn't ready or hadn't planned, you know, like, my steps until I got to university, I had sort of planned out since I was 12 kind of thing. Like mm. I knew what I was going to do. I knew how I was going to do it. Whereas after that, it sort of started betting like everyone else is influencing my plans and giving me advice on where to go. So I'm a firm believer that every person should play at least like some type of sport in their life, whether, yeah. it's, whether it's for like a school or university or something. It really does change how you perceive sports. Uh, and just like group dynamic uh, and like you you get a better understanding of like all the work and effort that goes into yeah that's what I was gonna yeah, yeah. yeah. And I but I think even without the personal understanding it is strange how people appreciate to a higher level you're going to start worse than you end up if you be consistent if you go to training <laughs> whereas in life we kind of tend to be like oh I want to do this and then like you do it for like three days and you're like, oh, I'm so bad at this. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ever be good at it. <laughs> and then you give up. Like, you know, it's quite difficult for people to just be like, you know, or they might stick to it for three months. And it's like, if anyone, you know, was like, I'm going to go be a soccer star and then yeah. go just three months. And then like everyone would be like, well, you didn't really give it a go, did you? Whereas in, in a lot of other things, it's really quite easy for us to be like, yeah, no, I, I worked I, I, I tried it, it's just not for me. Over a long period of time, if you're consistent and you know what you're sort of working towards, you're you're going to get there. You just need enough time. Even if I start a lot lower level than someone else, it's, it's probably going to take me more time. I could do it smarter, maybe. But mm -hmm. I mean, sport humbles you in a way you have to wait for your physical body as well. You know, in, in business and in intellectually and stuff, like you can go much quicker, put the time into it. And, and some people will get there quicker than you. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. So like, I do strongly believe you could do anything that you want to do, but you have to 
put the right amount of time into it for you. Thank you for providing insight into kind of just how you arrived to where you are right now. You said it, that uh, consistency is key. That is one of the primary reasons why I felt so, um, like I felt a connection to your videos. Y you've mentioned becoming better and you mentioned becoming better over time. So I'm just wondering, how did you stumble into Myers-Briggs and like what made you make your first video about, you know, just typology in general? Myers-Briggs helped me in the biggest way when I was younger, um, in my twenties, um, understand the psychological difference of introversion and extroversion. I don't know. I think I actually looked up in the dictionary, like the, what we were taught introversion and extroversion. It's like, you know, awkward and shy as introversion and extroversion is, you know, <laughs> Uh, like I actually think I, I looked it up just as a general definition and it is out there as a general de definition. So the psychological yeah. definition is obviously very different. And I really related to that when I, you know, did tests and, and got that. And I was like, oh, okay. And I think it was for me because I always was quite good at sport, fitness things really. Like I, I just was like outside a lot. So so then I was trying to get myself around people a lot. Like my friends were sporty and, and they always wanted to hang out and they, you know, in high school you're working out that sort of stuff anyway. But as I got older, I was like, I just don't want to hang out with these people. Like I don't want to be there. I don't want to be around them. I love them, but like I just, I never want to see them outside of, you know, class or whatever. And I just didn't get it. Like I didn't understand what was wrong with me uh, and then i was exhausted all the time and I, I didn't enjoy going out like i would actually i didn't go out that much but when i did i'd have to drink a fair bit of alcohol to like feel mm -hmm. like i i wasn't trying to figure out how to like interact with people like when i was drinking i was like quite <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's sort of the interesting version of me comes out when i drink but um yeah, and, and so learning about that, I was like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And so if I need to recharge by being alone, then that's okay. And I can then just recharge. And then when I want to spend time with people, that's okay too. So that helped me incredibly. And then, and then around that time too, I think I had already started sport. So it's a really good kind of like excuse. And I have to train tomorrow. Or I have to do this. I have to do that. And, you know, like it's easier to put boundaries in, right, when you're not as confident as uh, at, when you're younger like just sort of saying no whereas i'd just be like blame it on sport I'm like oh, i can't oh my coach said this like <laughs> and i'd just be like hiding in my room to a point where it was like i was at, i was at uni i was at training or i was by myself and um then i started to get a little bit more energy um to do more things that i wanted and to work on more things that i wanted i wasn't just feeling so flat all the time that was the biggest change for me and I didn't really go much into the rest of it for a long time until I was I was actually qualified teaching and then I was you know I was doing that part-time because of training and the head of science sort of said to me because I was saying something about having low energy or something and he goes oh, I must be really interesting being a teacher and an ex and an introvert because I get home and I'm all pumped up and I was like what the fuck did I not think of that <laughs> Like, and I was, I just thought because I was training full time and then working the rest of the time, I was like, of course I'm exhausted. Like, you know, that makes sense. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've got 25 kids in, in four to five or even six different classes a day mm -hmm. and you're giving them, you know, all of your energy. And then I just have to go, I'm like, you know, if I get home, I'm just like, no, I'm not. Um, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I, I can't, people are like, oh, you want to go here after work? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, and um, and so when I, and also when I teach, I, it's quite interesting. I've trained myself to be really kind of energetic when I talk to people and things like that. Um, but I did some of my first videos, and I'm sort of thinking, and it was like people are like, you need to smile more. You need to you know have more energy. And a lot of the things is like you, you talk through a smile, and so I've learned all of that sort of stuff. When I'm a teaching, I I kind of take on the persona of my favorite teacher when I was in high school because she did so much for me. And I'm like, why am I doing this? And I'm like way more energetic and I'm like cracking jokes. And I was like, this is not, Yeah, this is weird. And it's like, am I being fake? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Whatever the kids are getting the most benefit out of here, like I'll do that for them. But fuck, that was like braining. But I would just keep, I would, I didn't even purposely kind of sit down and think that, but I'm like, what am I doing right now? 
and it was it was embodying her because she just she helped me so much like I wasn't very good at English in high school and I happened to have her for like four years anyway so when he said that I was like holy shit yeah that makes sense why I'm exhausted all the time mm -hmm. and so I kind of cut down my teaching even more and tried to find options of like doing work that wasn't um so exhausting for me but it was a really good job to, for me to have while i did athletics because i could do it a bit more part-time and so i did continue to teach but i was like thinking more like i can't do this forever like this is not something that is going to add the most value to my life even though i adore i adore the kids i love teaching yeah. i love learning and stuff but i just i was like it's so important to me to have the energy to give to people properly after I moved to Melbourne and they went teaching online for the pandemic, I was just like, no, nah, I'm out. This is my this is my out of teaching. I ended up working on the mines for a bit and stuff, but I did project management while I was, you know, just I was just doing a temporary job to kind of work through the pandemic. Sorry, the Myers Briggs stuff. <laughs> so that was the introversion. Um, and then and then um, a bit later, um, I rediscovered um, Myers Briggs for some reason, and I like I really sort of connected with the INTJ profile, and mainly just in the things that I felt like I struggled with, I could sort of Google that. Like, does an INTJ struggle with this? And it would usually come up with like all this stuff that was highly relatable for me, and so that's what really got me sort of into that and sold into that. And I was like, this is a really useful tool mm -hmm. to help me when I can't talk to other people. Yeah, I just I just felt quite disconnected to a lot of people it's hard now because i've realized a lot of it was my own internal thinking or like almost a projection how i was experiencing things it wasn't necessary because i what myers briggs helped me a lot with is like understanding that everyone's different and they do things in different ways and give you things in different ways and so if i was wanting some sort of advice but like I realize now I've like sort of trained people throughout my life. Don't give me advice. I don't need advice. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the way that I would make decisions and, and things like that. Um, and it wasn't, I, I needed sort of help in something, but I didn't know how I needed it. And the way that they were giving it to me wasn't, it just wasn't useful to me. Yeah. So when I would have a conversation trying to figure out something, I, I just felt like this is not um, what I, what I need to work this out or, what I'm trying to convey to you, what I'm experiencing you, or like I, co I couldn't really articulate what was going on inside of me to to connect with people or to get help, I guess. It was mainly in, in times I needed help, I think. Yeah. And so then I would go um, just online. I never joined any of the forums or anything, but you can obviously just look at all everyone's answers. You don't, you don't need to, a lot of it. And spend a lot of time in there, like, just like, oh, wow, there's tons of people who feel this way. And, you know, it just really helped me feel like I wasn't the only one. And um, that just helped me enormously. And I just, you know, I related to the profile really strongly. And, yeah, I think I think it helped me understand myself a lot i was i was always wondering i've always been thinking about it a lot like this would be so useful for people to have in a school system you know to i didn't understand it enough to like you know use it but i know because i was doing sport i was like this is a later thing in my life like but imagine if we were taught from being children you know and then it, I, it is also quite complicated because you don't want to make, you know, some people like latch on to things and then they're like, I am only this. So mm. you would have to give available, like you, I mean, the point of it, right, is to develop all your functions is that, that you know, you would want that. So, but just having it available, because I feel like the school system is very structured in a very specific learner way that doesn't cater for a lot of people, you know. Yeah. And um, it also, I think the most important things is, you know, emotional intelligence and how we connect with people and how we communicate with people and how we embrace our own unique abilities and things. Yeah. And that I think should be taught rather than remembering things in a book that like we've moved on so much now, like you can Google it. Like, why do you have to keep that information just as a fact in your head? Yeah. It's, it's taking away space for for creativity and for um, expansion and I don't know, inner peace. <laughs> so I always like 
was like, that's something in the future I really want to kind of get into and explore because I want the education of the world. <laughs> I want to educate. <laughs> you know, I know that you can't just like change the world. I don't think you could change the world from the top down like probably I would change myself. But if you change yourself and then you can influence others to change themselves, then you actually do like start to have a ripple effect, you know, like the butterfly effect kind of thing. And you then you would change the world, you know, effectively. Like you would at yeah. least change your world and the world that's specific around you. And so it was always part of me that one time I would go into Myers Briggs deeper for that purpose of helping people understand themselves because I think that it at least with what I identified with it, it helped it helped me enormously. But I also want it to be used as something that challenges people to grow, not just accept that they suck at things. <laughs> you know, like oh, I'm naturally shit at this and that's it. That's and I'm and I'm struggled and unhappy with it. Like if you're naturally shit at it and you don't want to improve it, like and it doesn't give you any you know, unless you're affecting other people, of course, like you don't mm. want to be asshole to other people, but you don't have to develop things that you don't want to if it's not going to affect you in that way. Does that make sense? Does that sound too? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like uh, people get into Myers-Briggs for a lot of different reasons. We'll become better if we understand yeah. how to communicate properly with every person that we engage with. Thank you for providing your insight as a not just an olympian right i know you mentioned earlier you don't really it has you have to grow on the title but as a person who have just consistently showed up and then got awarded for that you know like um one of the biggest issues that i have uh with people that i am very close to is that they don't show up and mm -hmm. I, I think you're one of the best examples of if you just show up, you don't have to have like a grand plan like most people say you do. But if you keep showing up, right, it will lead to not just prestige, but it will lead to some type of accomplishment that you will be proud of. And I think that's a very, very powerful message that you can, well, you specifically just being alive, just being on this channel that you're sending to anyone that's watching this video. I do have to wrap this up. I had a great time talking to you. How do you want to end this? Like, is there any message that you want to provide to anyone out there um, that's watching this video, whether it's, it, it can be Myers Brick related or not? Any message for all the people watching? I mean, you kind of get what I want through through all of this. So I suppose I'll, I'm not very good at the self plug thing, but I am creating a free um, free community on school S K O O L. I suppose. John will put the link down there. It's a yeah. channel community and it's still, I'm still building it, but I'm trying to make courses that um, provide free um, tools and insights and stuff um, that I wish that a younger version of me had because I really struggled with the sort of traditional psychology and, and I, I wouldn't have gone and seen someone I struggled with trusting other people with my brain, I guess. Um, you know, like, there's a lot going on and I think you can, you know, if, you, if you're willing to do the work, you know yourself better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And just having the tools to help you figure out, because it, it's hard consciously to understand what's happening unconsciously, especially if you're starting to feel the, sen the sensations in your body and the emotions and everything that are really giving you your problems those sort of things then stop the conscious mind from from working optimally to to work out those issues clearly so nlp like if you're working with a one-on-one -on -one practitioner can uncover those problems very quickly because it works a lot with the subconscious but i'm trying to create resources and courses and tools that at least will get you a lot further than you would yourself i'm doing some cool things with chat gpt like to give you know, a simulation response and things and see how those work. So if you want to jump on there and check it out and like do the courses, I, like I want to give people value that's valuable and, and that works. And so, you know, test run it and let me know <laughs> how, it, how it goes. I, I just like, I just want to, I want to give people their, you know, their life. You know, who should it, life shouldn't be a battle, I don't think. Yeah. You know, like you go out and live it.
and yeah. um, experience it. I didn't really experience it for a long time. I just did it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's my message. So if you want to jump in there, do, do it. Because <laughs> you guys heard it from her first. You know, like She created the website school to offer free lessons, free guides. So she's doing it for the community. She actually, like, uh, if anything, check out, for sure, check out her website. Uh, for sure, check out her YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to her, uh, her channel and make sure you like it. And as with all my videos, let's all continue to grow and we'll all continue to grow together. Yara, thanks again for being on my channel. Thanks um, so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it, was, it was great talking to you. Uh, yeah, thank you, you for watching. Thank right. you. Bye, everyone.